What's up everybody, Rob here from Sage Tower Games, and we are here with the final episode, episode 7 of our Running and Adventure Path series. This is it, this is the capstone episode, and this is all about the big bad evil guy, otherwise known as the BBEG, your main main villain for your campaign, the one that's been pulling all the strings for everything, the one that's been behind it all. This is your final battle to end this campaign that has taken you however long it may have taken you to actually play it and to actually run it. Now, there are a few things I want to talk about for this particular thing, for this particular encounter that you're about to face and this encounter that i want to talk about is step one be prepared you know make sure you know that all the enemies in the fight you kind of have an idea of what all their abilities do you kind of have an ability you kind of have a you know if there's any spells that you may not fully be aware of that, that the enemy has kind of at least have an understanding for what they do any special abilities, any environmental hazards, know the encounter. You don't want to take... In other encounters, you may have kind of like pause in a moment to kind of look up a ruling or look up some sort of special spell that they may have. Don't take the air out of the room for this encounter. This is it. You know, you want people to be, be on the edge of the seats for this encounter. So know everything in that particular encounter speaking on that make sure that the mood and, and the setting is proper for it what i mean by this is if you if you're if you play music kind of doing your campaign find some good music you know make sure you get some good music kind of like sets the mood sets the epicness of the fight prepare the setting i've done it in the past sometimes well, I'll practice the description for the room or the description for the kind of how the room's going to look or if the enemy is going to monologue, you know, practice it a bit to yourself. Just so you kind of, so that you're not, especially if you're not um, someone who's really good at improv or someone who may not know, be the perfect like describer for, for everything in, in any situation. Give yourself a chance. Yes, the book does give you a description. It does give you a bit of like a little, there's probably description for the room and the creatures. You can take that, embellish it, enhance it, and make sure that when you talk about it, the players know that there's the grand scale of this room, the grand scale of wherever this battle is taking place. Now, on to the actual big bad entity themselves and for that one this this one's a pretty big one and this is don't hold back what i mean by this is don't be afraid to use abilities that are kind of at, you may you may perceive them as being a bit intense not broken, but definitely the kind of the unfun category of spells or abilities. This is the final battle. You know, don't be afraid to throw the kitchen sink at them. If you have a spell caster and they may know spells that can be the annoying ones, you know, they may have feeble mind prep, they may have disintegrates and will of the banshees and prismatic sprays you know go through the list if they're high enough they may even have like miracle or wish these kind of high level encount high level spells are these essentially really powerful spells that you don't really want to use too often because they can be kind of unfun to shut down a player for an entire fight it's one thing to shut down a player for like a regular fight, but for the final fight, just to shut them down, that's a bit rough. But 
If they've had time to prepare, so does the villain. Especially if your villain will most likely is some sort of intelligent creature. They may or may not know about the players and the, the party beforehand. They may even know some of the fighting tactics that the team uses. Maybe they have, you know, enemies have encountered them that have escaped. And that, you know, what gets a, what gets along that they like to use a lot of fire spells or fire damage. Maybe they come precast with a resist fire, you know, spell on them so that they have resistance to fire. That kind of knowledge, don't be afraid to use some of it. It's not meta knowledge if it kind of makes sense. Especially if your enemy has enough of an organizational setup where it makes sense that someone might have actually been able to tell the information, or if they can scry on the, the party, even if they're trying to fight their way to the enemy, there's a good chance that they may have seen them and get ready for it. So that kind of knowledge. As far as the broken spells go, the only rule I have for this one and this is my personal one, depending on how tough you want to be, I, I probably wouldn't, but don't do something that you know the party has no answer at all for. What I mean by this is, if there is a spell that shuts down a player and there is literally nothing that they have in their arsenal that can stop it, Maybe skip that one. Maybe. I had an example for this, and this was back to old school D and the old school Pathfinder first edition of Prismatic Wall. Now, Prismatic Wall, the way it works in the old edition was it creates a wall of all different colors. And to defeat the wall, you actually had to hit each of the you had to hit in order each color with a spell. To break that color. Now, the problem is, at least four of the, the seven colors, I knew that the players didn't have access to those spells. The party composition just didn't have a pure arcane caster in the group. So if I used a prismatic wall, it would have come, and I put it in a really bad place, it would have basically been. A wall that they can't break through. And that may have been a bit of an unfair move. But otherwise, curse spells, um, enchantment spells like dominate or you know, suggestion even, those kind of like mind control spells are fair game. The best thing to probably do with these kind of spells is if you've had in previous books, previous boss encounters, people that have done it, that helps a lot. So for instance, in my Age of Ashes campaign, one of the enemies that they fought in the end, near the end of the third book, so about halfway through the book, halfway through the campaign, they got hit with Feeble Mind. So, now that people mind is a curse effect, so now they know, okay, we can get hit with curse spells. We should probably have some sort of preparation for curse effects. So now they know, and you can kind of, next time I won't feel as bad about using people mind or using some of these spells, because they've had the warning that at this, at, you know, this point of the, of the campaign, you have enemies that can cast really strong spells. Here's your first taste. Get ready. It's going to become more and more possible. Also, play up to your enemy's intelligence. You know. Your enemy's probably smart, like I said before. So if they're smart, they probably know who to target generally based on the characters. They probably know that if they, you know, don't hit the fighter with all the with all the fortitude saving spells, maybe go for the the spellcaster in the back, or vice versa for like will will saving throws, 
you now obviously if the fighters like a real threat in their face and need to get rid of them that's a different story but they they know how to try to prioritize their targets they're not just gonna hit the closest thing next to them keep that in mind and to kind of the last real major point i want to talk about for this episode and this is a big one and that is Give credit where credit is due. And what I mean by this is you may have this great, you know, great plan for how this battle is going to play out in your head. You're going to have like this epic showdown, spells flinging left and right. It's going to be amazing. And then your party will cast a spell or do some tactic that you and that you did not think of. And it's going to completely change the encounter. And it's going to be a gotcha moment. And when this, if this happens, the first major thing is don't, don't be afraid. Don't throw a fit. Don't, don't be like, you know, the angry child who just throws their toys and stomps home. Because they didn't get to use all their cool abilities that the that the main villain had. If they came up with a plan that you did not think of and that your enemy doesn't actually have a counter for, bravo! Like you know, let the players relish in that moment. I think I've mentioned it before. I've mentioned a few times in other videos. The Starfinder campaign that I recently had wrapped up um, months back, the final battle, I had the one of the players cast Baleful Polymorph on my my main villain. And Polymorph is always obviously a major spell. And Baleful Polymorph lets you polymorph the villain. And looking at it, I looked through my cat through the stat block, all the rules, outside of rules, everything, and there was nothing that said it couldn't be hit by polymorph. I could have made up some like plot armor to make it immune so it could be still this all powerful fight. But it was a spell, I would did not have a preparation for it, and it was a Hail Mary play, and it worked. And the party, you know, they enjoyed it. They watched as they turned the enemy into this half walrus thing. And they watched as its AC just plummeted down, you know, three, four, five points, leaving it wide open for their melee soldier to just wreck the boss and end the encounter pretty quickly after that. Would I have liked it to have been a bit more of an epic duel? Yeah, of course. But I mean, I'm gonna remember that. They may remember that. That moment when they had the villain, they just went, you know, we're gonna cast Baleful Polymorph and just knock the enemy down. That's a good moment. That's one of those moments that sticks with you from, from a campaign. Don't don't ruin it because you, you you're mad that your that your enemy got got got, got bopped. Don't be. You're all in this together, having fun, playing a game. So don't let it get to you. Now, with all this information, with all the information from the past six episodes that we've done, I hope it's given you guys various insights into how to run an adventure path. Again, I've tried to stay relatively system free a lot of my examples do come from dnd and pathfinder those are the systems i'm more familiar with and kind of makes more sense for me kind of to like use those as examples but you know you could use any of those for any systems be it call of cthulhu be it savage worlds be it power by the apocalypse systems whatever you know there's various ways you can kind of just block things instead of like books into like story arcs and then go from there. The idea of 
you know, making sure your, your party knows what the situation is before the game starts. The idea of trying to incorporate the players into the story and making sure that they understand, you know, the foundation of the story when they begin. Being ready to know that it's not going to go as just like how the book says it's going to go. There's going to be times when you're going to have to make up stuff on the fly. There's going to be times where you're going to have to change what's in the book. Because sometimes the encounters just don't make sense. Sometimes you have to make things tougher, make things easier. That's up to you and your group. Knowing how to foreshadow elements so that that can enhance the story and make the story a better cohesive unit. Knowing how to identify and prevent burnout so that you don't get to a situation where you run 80% of the game through and then players start dropping out and then you have nothing. And lastly, as we just talked about, knowing how to encounter your big bad and how to make the encounter a memorable encounter. These are the, these are the battles that you've been kind of almost building up to for the whole campaign. So you want it to be that encounter that people go, yes. You want them to cheer after they, you know, after they win. If they're playing in person, you know, they high five each other. They're celebrating. It's great. You want that kind of moment for them. Yes, it may be bad for you because you're like, oh, my, my enemy lost. But it's, again, you're all telling a story together. So. With that, I hope you guys have enjoyed these seven episodes. Hope you've taken things out from them that you've liked. Be sure to comment on them. Be sure to let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. If there's anything additional that you may want to ask questions on, feel free to ask questions. I'm definitely available for that. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a good time running your own tabletop adventure pass. Thank you.